Okay, so this is the uh, tutorial on the Excel um, Assignment 1, Part A, which is regarding Topic 1, Bond Basics. Um, the problem from the book says, or the problem from the note says a bond has a face value of 1,000, annual coupon rate of 5%, required return of 9%, matures in 4 years, and assume that they're paid semi-annually, um, and calculate it using these three different ways. So we're just going to take a look at what happens when you have a semi-annual bond. Um, the given was that it's a $1,000 face value. The annual coupon rate is 5%, um, but coupons are paid semi-annually. So when you see something given in terms of annual, something in terms of semi-annual, you know you're going to have to convert uh, one of them. And the required return is 9%, um, which is of four years. So converting this over into all of the different, all of the other ones, um, we have the semi-annual coupon rate is 2.5, which is 5% divided by 2. The required yield is 4.5, um, and matures in 4 years, which is 8 periods. So, I like to draw a timeline. I usually um, put, the num put the years on the bottom. So I know this is a 4-year bond, um, and we're in year or period 0. But because this is semi-annual, then I also put tick marks in between these. And um, we now know that it's uh, a semi-annual coupon rate of 25% on a face value of $1,000 gives you $25 every period rather than $50. Um, if you were just doing this as a semi-annual bond or as an annual bond, you'd have $50 just here, 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 and then at the end. But we're doing um, we're doing semi-annual, so we need to um, do it as eight different periods. And then when you get to this last period, you have you're given the bullet or the $1,000 face value um, plus the $25, so it's $10.25. So um, we're going to now look at how to do that in Excel. We I made a little, you know, just what we did in the other sheet here. Um, you can hide that if you want. So this is um, look at this. Sorry, look at this in Excel 2007. This is the sheet that you should have in front of you. So the user inputs, um, this is what was she asked uh, to put on a separate page, but I just did on the same page so that it would um, flow together easily. So the annual coupon rate, this is all the givens, um, and we name these cells, you can look. So the outputs, this is um, basically what you're doing to convert all the annuals into semi-annuals. Um, so the, uh, the first thing we look at is the coupon payment. Um, rather than being $50 um, every year, it's $25 semi-annually. So that's the coupon rate of 5% times the future value, which is $1,000 would give you $50. But now we divide that by the number of periods, which is 2 per year, which is semi-annual, meaning it's $25. Um, the periodic required yield was just 9% divided by 2 and the period remaining is 8 because it's um, 2 times the number of or you know the 2 semi-annual periods um, times 4 years would give you 8 periods so to do the cash flows um, we just set this equal to the coupon payment and you can drag it over to the right um, and then that's true from all the way from period 1 to period 7 which is actually year period 7 is actually year 3.5 if you look at it um, and then year 4 which is period 8 um, we have what we said before the face value plus the uh, coupon payment and this row here is using the um, uh, present value function or present value um, equation which is just the future value divided by 1 plus r to the n and the only things to keep track of here is that the future value um, or you can use future value um, right now the future value since we're doing it for individual periods the future value is actually just the coupon payment so that's in row D16 or in row 16 divided by 1 plus we made to make sure we use the periodic yield here which was 4.5 it's basically the converted yield um, and we raise it to the uh, period power so um, even though this is year even though this is year one, it's actually period two because it's semi-annual. And then all this does is sums all of those. So that gives you a um, bond price of 
868 so that means that right now it's um, selling at a discount so now that's how we that's how we did it with cash flows now we're going to look at um, the present value function and this is an equation this is an equation in excel this pv parentheses and you see here it kind of describes what you need to do so the rate we want to make sure we use the this is the discount rate right so we want to use 4.5 because it's semi-annual and the periods remaining is just the number of periods in the um, entire, uh, you know, the entire life of the bond, which is eight. Um, and then the coupon payments we use twenty-five dollars, and the future value is one thousand dollars. And we want to make sure you put a negative in front of it, um, and that's just kind of a trick. Like if you see in your, if you see in your um, calculator, whenever you put in, you know, you pay negative. $800 to get this bond that will give you this period, you know, that'll give you this, uh, um, these cash flows. So you have to put a negative in front of it. So the last one is using the price function, and this is a little bit of a more confusing um, equation, but uh, you want to make sure before you use the price function equation that if you're in Excel 2003, which is what this one is, um, you have to go to Tools, Add-ins, and click or you want to check all these three, but pretend they weren't checked. Um, if you tried to type in the equation, it would give you a pound value or pound name because um, that price equation is actually an add-in in 2003. So you have to go to Tools, Add-ins, and I always, when I open up Excel, just make sure all three of those are added in, the Tool Packs and the Solver add-in. And you see that fixed the equation. So let's look at 2007. In 2007, you actually don't need these checked. Um, you could you could uncheck these and the equation would still work. Um, that's because in 2007 they actually added the price equation as one of the default equations. Um, but it's always good to go to Excel Options, Add-ins, Go, and click these three. All right, so now we're going to take a look at this um, price function. It says price parentheses and then the settlement date and the settlement date um, is the day that you buy the bond so we're gonna give somebody eight hundred and sixty eight dollars for this bond um, on January 1st 2000 and it will mature um, in four years which is eight periods um, so uh, we do 2000 plus the years which is um, Four years, so it'll mature in 2004. Um, with uh, on January 1st, 2004. Um, but now we want to make sure that we go, we're now in the price equation and we're at the rate part, and we want to make, make sure that we, you know, use the. Um, in this case, we want to use the annual rate because the price equation is smart enough that later on it's going to ask you the frequency, which is how often, you know, semi-annual or annual. So for the price equation, you want to use the annualized terms. So for the rate, it's the coupon rate, which is 5%, the required yield, which is 9%, and the redemption value, which is $100. Um, and that is just a uh, term that's just saying, we're, she says, we're using the conventional redemption value of $100. Um, and that's just if the issuer wants to repurchase the bond from you, he would give you either a premium or so, um, I just I could give you a premium for it, but right now we're just going to say that it's $100. Um, so that's pretty much 100% of the face value. So if it was 105, it would be he would give you um, whatever the bond was worth at that point, 105% of that. Um, so that is the we're just going to use 100 in this case. And the number of periods this is what I was saying. The equation is smart enough that it asks you how frequent this is, um, and we're going to do twice a year. And if something, if an equation has um, brackets around it, it means that it's not necessary, so we're not going to do the basis. Um, and then, um, so this just gives you the price, but um, we also want to, and that gives you $86, but we also want to um, multiply it by the future value divided by 1,000. All right, so um, I have to, uh, the next tutorial is going to be on um, conditional for formatting, um, which is the other part of homework one.